orange butterflies and aqua sequins in constant tween slight bosoms. Silk roses darting from behind her ears. The passion flower of southwest Los Angeles meandered down Hoover Street, past dark, shuttered houses where women from Louisiana shelled peas round three o'clock and sent their sons whistling to the store for fat back and black-eyed peas. She glittered in heat and seemed to be looking for rides when she wasn't and absolutely eyed every man who wasn't lame, white, or nodding out. She let her thigh slip from her skirt crossing the street. She slowed to be examined, and she never looked back to smile or acknowledge a sincere, hey, mama, or to meet with the eyes of someone purposely finding something to do in her direction. She was sullen, and the rhinestones etching the corners of her mouth suggested tears. Fresh kisses that had done no good. She always wore her stomach out lined with small iridescent feathers, and the hairs around her navel seemed to dance, and she didn't let on. She knew. From behind her waist was aching to be held, the pastel ivy drawn on her shoulders to be brushed with lips and fingers, smelling of honey and Jack Daniels. She was hot, a deliberate croquette who never did without what she wanted, and what she wanted was to be unforgettable. She wanted to be a memory, a wound to every man arrogant enough to want her. She was a wrath of women in windows, finger shades, old lace curtains, camouflage and despair, and stretch marks. So she glittered honestly, delighted she was desired and allow those especially scheming and tactful suitors to experience her body and spirit, tearing so easily, blending with theirs. And they were so happy and lay on her lime sheets full and wet from her tongue. She kissed them reverently even ankles, edges of beards. At 4.30 a.m. she rose, moving the arms and legs that trapped her. She sighed, <sighs> affirming the sculptured man, and made herself a bath of dark musk oil, Egyptian crystals, and Florida water to remove his smell to wash away the glitter, to watch the butterflies melt into suds and the rhinestones fall beneath her buttocks like smooth pebbles in a Missouri creek. Laying in water, she became herself ordinary, brown braided woman with big legs and full lips, regular. Seriously intending to finish her night's work, she quickly walked to her guest, straddled on her pillows, and began. You'll have to go now. I, c I have a lot of work to do, and I can't, with a man around, uh, hear your pants. There's coffee on the stove. It's been very nice, but I can't see you again. You got what you came for, didn't you? And she smiled. He would either mumble curses about crazy bitches or sit dumbfounded while she repeated, I couldn't possibly wake up with a strange man in my bed. Why don't you go home? She could have been slapped upside the head or verbally challenged, but she never was. And the ones who fell prey to the dazzle of hips, painted with orange blossoms and magnolia scented wrists, had wanted no more 
than to lay between her sparkling thighs and plan on leaving before dawn. And she had been so divine, devastatingly bizarre, the way her mouth fit round. And now she stood, a regular colored girl, full of the same malice and livid indifference as a sister. Worn from supporting a would-be horn player, awaiting by the window, and they knew, and left in a hurry. She would gather her tinsel and jewels from the tub and laugh gaily. <laughs> or vengeful. She stored her silk roses by her bed, and when she finished writing an account of her exploit in a diary, embroidered with lilies and moonstones, she placed the rose behind her ear and cried herself to sleep. For colored girls who have committed suicide when the rainbow was just not enough. <laughs>